Hi, and welcome to another episode of Art Source. Today, we're going to be looking at Faber-Castell India Ink Markers. These are a great embellishment tool to go atop any acrylic or water-based media. Um, it is able to get into fine, uh, detailed areas and um, can also add dimension of color. For this example, I'll be working on a panel. This is an ampersand gesso board, 3x5, and I'll be embellishing with the Faber-Castell markers, which come in packs, sets, and also individual. They come in both thin markers and thick markers, depending on what surface area you're looking to cover, and they can be found in a variety of colors. For this particular image, I'm going to start by deepening the water by choosing a small tip, uh, thinner turquoise marker. I'm just going to go in and cover the area lightly with color, and then I'll be able to go back and chase it with an acrylic brush, softening the edges and being able to distribute the color more evenly. In this case, I'll be using a silver brush, number two round. So uh, just uh, having a mildly damp bristles on the brush will allow me to smooth the color over just like a water soluble marker. It allows me to get fine detail without having to mix and remix colors uh, just to add color or embellishment layers atop an acrylic painting. This can also be used for a, another series of projects including any kind of watercolors, uh, greeting cards, anything that requires just soft touch and attention to detail. I can also take a thicker marker, in this case I'm going to use the chromium green, and I'm just going to detail or embellish over some of the areas. It especially picks up on the opaque areas, such as areas that were painted in um, off-white or yellow ochre, um, and the color really grabs onto that opaque masking created by the paint. So I'm just going to wiggle through the trees here, creating a little bit more of a fine tree line. I'm just going to kind of uh, squiggle the pen around so that I can get some unique shapes and uh, details for value and color variants. So that way I have areas of golden light peeking out, but also uh, some facets of dark as well as the chromium green that I'm actually distributing on now. So I'll continue working the area, maneuvering around different parts of the painting, and I'll determine where I can get a little bit more of uh, color enhancement and smooth out um, throughout the painting. So another option that I can create for the paintings is that I can move and uh, create with packs. This is another pack that I've uh, distributed here. It's a, a pack that was on clearance at a local art store and has uh, several thin line variety colors in them. And I'm just going to take a um, soft brown. This is a raw umber color. And I'm just going to put a little bit more mark making in the embankment of the um, river here. I'm just going to put a little fine work. Uh, we've got kind of a purple tone happening with the embankment of the river right now. And I'm just going to embellish with some soft uh, cocoa tones. And then again, repeat where I can take the brush and create some fine lines and soft finessing in between the color layers. So you see with this small painting working on this five by seven, or even if it was a larger painting where I'd want to use uh, the larger markers to cover more surface area, um, I'm able to create some soft translucent layers of color without having to um, you know, mix paints or reconstitute areas. So these are great finishing tools and embellishment tools. They also work great for art journals, uh, sketchbooks, and other um, awesome projects where you're choosing to uh, add embellishments or layers of color. So I'll also uh, mention that you can use them for other projects as well. Um, I've used them on portraits to get fine lines and to have additional marks such as this. This was an acrylic portrait um, that I've begun and it's been created on um, just a gessoed um, acrylic paper. And I'm going to use the skin tone pack. This has a variety of warm tones for um, creating a little bit more depth within the skin tones. Uh, there are different um, light and dark colors, some that have a little bit more rich depth, so that way when I'm creating shadow around the eyes like so, I can add a little bit more depth and embellishment of color in there. But then I can also move to lighter tones, um, which don't really have an opaque quality, but can create some light tinting, especially when worked on, um, on white surfaces. So again, I can use the brush to touch up and kind of tickle the edges to soften in between. 
um, but I can also use a variety of colors um, just to indicate the amount of um, like if I want to make the cheeks rosy and add a little bit of uh, warm shadows on the side then I can just kind of fine-tune that in and even use my finger to smudge them so um, some other things to consider is that when I um, look at the colors I'm going to notice that underneath the color names there are also uh, a series of stars that show how light or dark the area is so in this case this is the Indian red which is a darker tone it's got a series of three stars under it where this smaller pen is actually a two star medium flesh tint so it's not quite as dark as the other um, pen itself. You'll also notice that some are opaque and some are more tra transparent which gives you some uh, variety as far as coverage but I will mention that the opaque ones aren't uh, tremendously opaque in the fact that I usually have to have a white paint pen or some kind of masking uh, material to lay down a foundational layer to conceal some of the layers beneath and then I can go back after it's dry and stain them with color. So I hope that you have enjoyed um, learning today about the possibilities that can happen with the uh, Faber-Castell Indian ink markers, and we hope to see you soon.